Hey everybody, if you've got a Keurig uh, coffee machine like I do, this one's several years old, and yes, this is my dresser about uh, 13 or 14 years ago, I decided to walk into the kitchen in the morning was <laughs> was too far, I was just too lazy for that, so I have my... <laughs> I have mine in the bedroom. Uh, but anyway, I went down the, the rabbit hole uh, because I, know, I do know enough about mold that uh, the internal uh, reservoir and uh, hoses inside might make for a perfect environment for mold. And so I started looking at all kinds of videos on it where people were taking theirs apart and I thought I'd share with you what I found. Most all of the videos that I watched on it, everybody was taking them apart, trying to get to the in, the internal uh, reservoir because that that's where they were certain they would find it to be moldy. Uh, it's actually very difficult to take it apart. You have to cut wires and hoses and everything. Uh, but for those that got to the internal reservoir, they were kind of surprised to find that uh, there there wasn't really any signs of mold in there. Uh, the internal reservoir is stainless steel, and the bottom in the bottom of the reservoir there's a heating element. And so I looked into it, and mold uh, the heat that it takes to kill mold is between 140 and 160 degrees. So then I started looking at what. Um, what temperature does the Keurig heat the water to? Well, it heats it to 192 degrees. They've deemed that the perfect temperature for a cup of coffee. Uh, and so that's why I wasn't, or they weren't seeing any uh, mold inside that reservoir. Now, sometimes they found some mold inside the internal hoses. Uh, they would cut the hoses open and, and see some in there. Um, my guess is because, again, that 192 degrees should kill the mold in there as well. But my guess is what I was seeing uh, in these videos were people that the the machine had finally stopped working and maybe it had been sitting for a time before they got the idea to do a video and taking it apart. So if it sat for a while being dark and moist in there, that's a perfect environment for mold to get going. But originally I was going to I was coming into it thinking I was just going to get rid of this thing. It's about four years old, and I had not done anything really in the way of cleaning it. I hate to say, but uh, true. Uh, but So I decided anyway to keep it and to clean it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very easy to do, and if we do that oh, every few months or so, we shouldn't have to worry about it. First off, I should mention that mine gets used every single day. There's nothing that happens in my world without coffee. I, I don't, I'm not even in, interested in forming syllables until I've had at least one cup of coffee. So if, if yours sits for, you know, days on days or weeks, then there's cause for concern. Uh, and you would want to clean it before using it. But uh, and any, anyway, on to the cleaning of it. We all know that this contraption here this uh, overflow bin gets really nasty so you obviously take that and clean it out under here most of us don't know this comes out and it's held by three little tabs one there one here and one up here and if you press on get two of the tabs going you can pull this out and also, let's see if I can do this with one hand. That comes apart. Most people are not aware of that. I wasn't. Uh, but anyway, that can get pretty funky, um, as you'll see if you do yours. So you want to clean those and then uh, it'll wipe around in here and up in here. I saw some people taking a little needle or whatever and sticking it up in there. I'm not really sure what that was all about. I didn't find that to be necessary. And then for uh, cleaning it out inside, what we want to do is this. What you want to do is you get this put back together and put in place uh, the way that it is supposed to be in there. You can see the writing on the bottom side and then these grooves go 
opposing each other in the left to right. Um, put that back together. I've got halfway filled with water. I've got a cup under here. I've got it heated up. The other half, I'm going to put good old-fashioned distilled white vinegar. That's good. Then, what we do is I'll put the top back on, shut it down, use the largest cup button, and we're going to let it start running the vinegar through the vinegar and water solution. Vinegar, by the way, is incredible at killing mold just so you know. But uh, we'll let that run and fill the cup. We dump it out. We do it again. We dump it out. And again. And we do that until the add water light comes on. Now we know that vinegar solution is all inside the internals. We're going to let it sit for about an hour. You can be a rebel if you want. And let it sit for 53 minutes, and that'd probably be fine. <laughs> but we want to let the vinegar and, and uh, water solution do its thing in there. Then after about an hour, you uh, rinse this out and just put clean water in it, and then start running cups of clean water until the vinegar smell is gone and uh, then we've gotten it out of the internals. The last thing we want is a cup of morning coffee that tastes like vinegar that could uh, that could start the morning off sideways. Hope that helps uh, and alleviates any concern you might have. Uh, again I was coming at it probably thinking I would get, get rid of mine but uh, nope it's going to live to see another day. Have a good day.